This question may seem a little odd at first, but if you keep in mind that energy is something that can neither be created nor destroyed, and is rather something that is transferred between objects, that may help you realize that most everything is going to require energy in some sort of fashion in order to occur. For cells, this means that most of their processes are driven by some sort of energy, particularly in the form of ATP. If you consider processes in the cells that don't require ATP, this is going to be processes that typically involve diffusion or any sort of passive transport between the membrane or within the cells. And this is because diffusion relies on the entropy of the system where things are moving from high concentrations to low concentrations and spreading out in the universe or inside the cell environment. So if you can consider some common functions that cells are going to carry out, they're going to destroy certain objects or break them down in the process of catabolism. And of course, they're going to build certain products through the action of anabolism. They need a way to bring in products and make them leave the cell. So this is going to be exocytosis and endocytosis. And cells also need a means to communicate within themselves and with other cells around them. So that could be, say, signaling. Of course, you have channels across the membrane responsible for bringing in certain products and for propagating certain signals along the cell. You're also going to conduct transcription and translation. And these are important for making proteins, important for replicating the DNA inside the cell, and fall under the category of the growth and synthesis function of all cells. Lastly, of course, you have that example of protein synthesis that was given in the problem. So all of these are kind of common functions you'll find that all cells are going to conduct and of course, there are many others. So if you consider how these would work or sort of their analogy to a real human circumstance, we can start with catabolism. So this is the process of breaking molecules down. Cells will do this to turn glucose and convert it into ATP or break down certain molecules to reform them into others that will be more useful for the survival of the cell. So in human life, this could be related to something such as scrapping, which could be breaking apart a car for junk parts in order to integrate them into other cars to help them survive longer or carry out their purpose. And of course, the energy required for scrapping is going to be the mound power required to run that and the tools and the fuels required to run those tools in order to break apart the scrap metal or other scraps. For anabolism, this is the process of building objects up, which is going to be actually converting molecules from a small substance into a larger substance, such as with the storage of energy, where we can convert pyruvate into glucose, or when we create lipids in order to store them as a long-term energy source. So in humans, this of course is related to certain things like building up large bulk goods or say like a building. And of course this, if you're making a building or a larger structure, could involve say concrete and again the tools required to build that up or say the framework of the object we're creating. So the energy here, of course, is the raw materials needed to create these objects, as well as the energy supply, such as gasoline or electricity to run these. With exocytosis or endocytosis, this is either packaging objects and removing them out of the cell or bringing them into the cell. So this is respective, exocytosis is out of the cell, 
and endocytosis is into the cell. And this is related to different types of packaging companies or say delivery services. A delivery service will sort of gather all the goods they need and transport them out of a building. And of course, if they're running between different delivery services or between different components of their own delivery service, they're going to bring in trucks or some sort of delivery service into themselves as well. So this would be in the form of those packages that they are running and delivering, as well as the manpower or gasoline needed to actually transport this. Moving on, we have the signaling pathway between cells. When you look at a cell, oftentimes there, there's going to be some sort of stimulation to a protein on the outside, such as by a growth factor telling the cell to grow and divide. This is going to trigger a cascade where it's going to send that signal to multiple different proteins inside the cell, and each of those proteins being stimulated is going to stimulate even more different proteins. So here, by si starting and activating a signal, a single protein on the outside of the cell, it's causing this cascade or multiplied signal to different proteins inside the cell. So for this, this could be like a mass email system. You could say that one employee is going to email another, and that employee will email, say, six others, and those six others will send that email to, say, 15 other people. And by then, you can see that the correspondence is multiplying, and you're getting more and more and more information spread across. So here, the energy or the form required to run this would be, again, manpower. Or you could say it's the actual email or the actual typing going into creating those emails to send that signal across. From there, we can move to channels. So you may know about aquaporins or other channels where ions can simply diffuse through. But these channels that we're going to talk about are specifically for active transport. One of the most important forms of active transport in the cell membrane is to pump potassium inside of the cell and to pump sodium out of the cell. And that's to maintain the function of NAK ATPase, which is going to allow for a slightly more negative stuff negative potential inside of the cell and a slightly more positive potential outside the cell. And that holds many different functions. So if we can imagine a channel in real life, this could be like some sort of canal, like a waterway system or like a dam. And the energy required to run these could be the form of electricity or say the mechanics to actually open dams or to open a canal when we want to open that channel to send the contents along. Another thing I forgot to mention before is the use of enzymes. As you know, enzymes are very important and of course many of them will require ATP in order to function. And ATP, of course, is that energy molecule that all of these cellular functions are going to typically require in one way or another to either start it or to continue allowing it to function. So enzymes, of course, are going to allow for the easier breakdown of one substance into two products or to build two products into one substance through either catabolism or anabolism. So here you can imagine enzymes are a lot like human machines inside of say a factory. They're going to run their simple processes only one process at a time since they're very specific and they help it run more efficiently than say a human or an individual that has more rates of error and could be less specific. 
And of course, machines typically run by the machinery or the parts used to run them, and of course, electricity. From here, we can run onto these growth and synthesis patterns. For transcription, this is the process of turning a DNH strand into mRNA through the use of a DNA polymerase or RNA polymerase. So here you can imagine this is a lot like a computer program. When a computer reads a program or some form of script, it's basically running along the script and interpreting it to make a long string telling it what to do. If something is wrong inside the script or the program that it's reading, it of course is either going to stop and malfunction or it can repeat that error into the mRNA it is creating. So here you can imagine the energy source or the what's needed to create this program are actual programmers or say the electricity needed to run the computer. Translation is the process of turning that mRNA into proteins, typically a protein string. So you can imagine that process, as was mentioned before, is very similar to building something up. Or you could say, since it's running off of a computer program, this is a lot like the graphics or like the animations inside of a computer program. The computer is learning what it needs to do and it's going to carry out those processes through the use of graphics or animations or whatever's carrying out that program. And here you can imagine the products needed to run this would be the actual manpower such as the graphic designers or animators or it could be like the tools or electricity or anything of that function. So here you could get an idea of what this question is getting at, just identifying some simple functions that all cells seem to carry out and how these can relate to real life, to similar circumstances that we see. So this should give you a good idea about how to formulate those different answers.